Okay, so perfect square rule first of all. The perfect square rule, um, there are a couple of variations of it, but then I'm going to consolidate it into one. So we're looking at it from an expansion's perspective, by the way, not from a factorisation perspective. I think factorising, recognising a, a trinomial as a perfect square is a bit harder than what I'm about to show you now. Yes, Jamie? No, no, I didn't bring them today, Jamie, so I'm just going with the laptop microphone. So you probably can't hear me, but that's okay. All right, so um, the perfect square rule is, uh, has two forms. One is A plus B all squared. And a plus b all squared is square the first, twice the product in the middle, square the second one. Okay, by first I mean the first term, and by second one I mean the second term, and product means you multiply them together, together, and then it's two times that, you double it. So square the first plus twice the product plus square the second. Um, if you've got a minus b instead, which is really just a plus negative b, then you would have square the first minus twice the product plus square the last. So because we're squaring negative b, it ends up being a positive b squared. So you're always you always have a plus b squared. Now I'll just give you a little bit of a um, so that's the two rules, but you can sort of write the two rules a little bit more succinctly if this helps. So I can say a plus or minus b squared is equal to a squared plus or minus 2ab plus b squared. Is that okay? So it basically means just, so whatever the sign is between the two numbers or terms in the binomial, you follow that sign through to the middle term. But the squares are always positive for the perfect square. Any questions? Let's see that action then. Sorry, I said any questions and went on straight away. No? Okay. Let's see it in action. This is a harder problem, so not a straightforward one, like you should have done in core, uh, but not massively harder. So let's have a look at 3 minus 2x squared all squared. Now, first thing I should point out is that this is a perfect square. Okay? I have two terms that are subtracted from each other. They just happen to be 3 and 2x squared. But they're just two terms. And then we have the uh, binomial is squared. So the 3 minus 2x squared is all squared. So it fits the pattern. And that's what you need to continually say. Does it fit the pattern for the rule? Or can I change it so it does fit the pattern for the rule? Okay? I legally change it. You can't just do random stuff. You can't do math and magic. You actually need But sometimes you can manipulate an expression. So it does fit the pattern. In this case, it already is in that pattern. You've got something minus something else all square. Now I'm going to put my equal sign underneath here so that it's nice and clear. So this next step, if it's at all complicated, um, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply the rule directly rather than trying to go straight to the answer. With practice, you could pretty much go straight to the answer. But just for this sake, I'm going to go that's 3 squared. Now, notice there's a minus in the middle, so it's a minus here, twice the product. Now, are you okay if I use bracket notation like that? It simply uh, saves me from writing multiplication signs in, which can be quite messy, I suppose. It makes your, your whole term expand out quite significantly. So by putting brackets in there, it's effectively just saying these three are the things I'm multiplying together. Okay, is that okay with everyone? Um, but then wouldn't there be a times between the three and the two in the format that you want? Between the two and the... So these three things are multiplied together. The two times three times two x squared. And the subtraction is the subtraction of this entire term. Does that kind of make sense? So it's not like the distributive law where we would have minus two times three plus minus 2 times 2x two squared, because there's no addition or subtraction there. So it's literally just those three things multiplied together. You don't distribute the negative unless it's a, an addition or subtraction. So the brackets simply just keep those three terms or those two terms together. And then we add the last term, which I'm just going to keep in brackets as well. And that keeps it nice and clear. Here's my first term that I've squared. Here's my second term that I've squared. And I've got twice 
the first term times the second term there. Yes, thank you. Well, no, not quite. I, where I stepped up was, it should have been 2x squared all squared. But it does make a difference. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it makes a difference for the x squared, but it also makes a difference for the 2. Yeah. So we keep the whole thing in brackets. So I reckon as soon as something gets a bit tricky, keep the brackets in, take an extra line, remind yourself that the tree is already dead that the book was made from, so therefore, you know, don't waste its life and actually use it to explain the answer really well. Okay, so an extra line that doesn't matter. Now I'll, I'll simplify. Remember, simplification is simply about going from more complex to something more basic or simple or straightforward. So in this case, I know what 3 squared is, so I can say that's equal to 9. And I can multiply these things together because they're a product. There's no distributive law, it's just look at the numbers first 2 times 3 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12. And then I've got an x squared at the end, so it's minus 12x squared. And then 2x squared, now this is where brackets are absolutely crucial because we're not just squaring x squared, we're squaring 2x squared, which means I have to square this and I have to square this. So 2 squared is 4, and x squared times x squared, which is what x squared squared is, is equal to x to the power of 4. You look at the indices and just add them up. No. Two plus two is four. No. Yeah. That's not what we do with this because the brackets. So it would truly it would be two times two. Two equals four. Uh, no, it wasn't a trick question. That's what you do. You generally do do. Um, so I'll just explain that again. I'll, I'll even spell it out, but then I'll erase it. So I'll do that in the now try section just to spell it out. So, and I deliberately chose a harder one. You know, it wasn't a straightforward one. So don't. Don't worry if you're not quite getting it straight up. Just take it a step at a time and ask what's the question. Anything squared is just it multiplied by itself. So that's 2x squared times 2x squared. But this term here actually just means 2 times x squared. So I've really got 2, oops, 2 times x squared times 2 times x squared. Okay, I'm just putting in the times that are normally understood to be there. x squared... That actually just means x times x. That's what x squared means. So I've actually got 2 times x times x times 2 times x times x. So that's like, this is like the fully expanded version of this whole thing here. Now, if I now look at the numbers and the variables separately, 2 times 2 is 4. x times x times x times x is repeated multiplication of x four times over, and so it's x to the power of four. Okay, and when we do an indices unit later on, um, we'll there are some laws that you can use to sort of make that process a little bit faster, but that's basically what we're doing. And I was pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong, but I was pretty sure you had done indices in year nine, four, where you simply added the indices together and then multiplied. Is that sounding familiar? I'm going to be honest with you. The thing was, I was confused about, isn't index law four if there's a in to see in a bracket and it's in C outside the bracket oh, that's okay. to apply. Right. I do apologize. I thought you didn't cover all of them. So we're using these two laws then. A B to the power of N is equal to A N to the power of sorry A to the power of N B to the power of N. That's why it was two to the power of two and X squared squared. Cool. Um, and A to the power of N to the power of M is equal to the power of A to the power of N M. You multiply the powers together. So you can see I've got 2 times 2 is 4. So I just multiply the powers together. I'm sorry if I was spelling it out a bit too much when you've got your index laws already. I just wasn't didn't really appreciate that. But that's basically it. That's um, All we can do now is give you harder and harder stuff to try and figure out, really. But at the end of the day, it's about you identifying, is this a perfect square? What are the two terms that I'm going to... Um, uh, uh, in my binomial, and therefore how do I use it to solve my problem. So um, I'm going to give you a problem to try now. In just a few minutes to uh, give it a go. And Yeah, thank you. Um, I was just going to say, either do it in your summary book in pencil, if you want a second example in your summary book, or put it into your workbook. It's up to you. You'll need your summary book later on, though. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
is I've gone 2x cubed squared is 4x to the power of 6 and 1 squared is 1 and the term in the middle is missing. Okay, now it's that's a mistake and if you're making the mistake it means you're not there yet with the perfect square. But you can get there, it just means if you're making that mistake, catch yourself on it and make it less often until you don't make it at all. Because gee whiz, it would be wonderful if it would have got to test time, no one was making that mistake by then. Okay? And uh, as I explained to another student, it's a little bit like this, right? Um, 4 squared is equal to 10, right? Because 4 is just 3 plus 1 squared, and that's equal to 3 squared plus 1 squared, and that's equal to 9 plus 1, which is equal to 10. Now clearly that's bonkers because 4 squared is 16. So what's missing? The middle term in your expansion. So that's, that's all. So if you're making that mistake, if you're making that mistake, just take note. You're not there yet. What do you need to do? More practice, uh, be more careful, think about it carefully first, check to make sure you're following the rule, which we just went through. All that kind of stuff is what you need to do in order to improve. Okay? If you're not there yet, it's all good. Alrighty, let's quickly go through the solution. Is that the answer? Okay, so first step. The first step is to simply um, square the first term plus twice the product of the two terms in the middle plus one. And just double check, was it a plus here? Yes, it is. So that follows through there. And then I just work it out. Two squared is four, and x cubed squared, three twos are six, so it's four x to the power of six. Plus x cubed, uh, sorry, 2 times 2 times 1 is 4, x cubed is x cubed, and then plus 1 on the bottom, on the end because 1 squared is 1. Okay. Now, one thing that will really help you with perfect squares is if you know your squares, because that will help you identify what's going on as well. So you should know all your squares up to at least 13 squared. Okay, everything from 0 squared to 13 squared. And if you want to get really excited, um, go from negative 1 all squared to negative 13 squared as well. That's pretty easy to do if you know the first half. Brandon? Why does the x cubed the first term? Because there are no other x's in that term. I'll just zoom up so you can see it. That middle term there, there's an x cubed, but no other x's in that term there. So that means that we've got an x cubed left over, nothing else. We multiply the numbers together, 2 times 2 times 1 is 4. And then we multiply the variables together, but there is only one variable, just x cubed. And so it just stays as x cubed. Why would you double, why would you do double the like two, x Because the, you're not raising x cubed to any power um, at this stage. The only way you can increase a power here is either by multiplying it by x to another power or by raising the whole thing to a certain power. We don't have that. I don't get where we get the two in the it's bracket. It's like that's two right. Right. It's just, Remember when he showed us all those like two A B? Yeah. It's like factorising. Yeah, it's like you can the thing instead of two A instead of A B you can do X. Okay, so maybe that would help actually, Simon. Thank you. What happens if I just do this? The two X Q is like A and the one is like b. So I've got a squared plus 
Yeah, put the colour scan in there too. I've got A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. Okay, oh, sorry, I was still zooming in, sorry. There we go. So we're just matching up the A's and the B's, they're like so. A and then an A, B and then a B. It's just that we need to identify that our A is trickier than usual. It's not like X plus Y or squared or 7 plus B or squared. It's a more complicated term. But we use the same idea. We look at the term and we say, what is that first term? It's not just a simple 3 or an X, it's 2X cubed. And what is the second term? It is 1. And then you apply the formula as such. And I just wonder whether I just went a bit too far by using brackets like I had as well, rather than not. So maybe, I won't do this all the time, but maybe just for this one here, um, I'll just do it in a different colour. So it's like, I have to use brackets here. So it's 2 times 2x cubed times 1 plus 1 squared. I have to use brackets around that first one because it's a complicated thing on square. Is that a bit clearer? Yeah. Anyone else need questions or clarification? Remember, asking asking clarification questions is a pathway to success for you. That's saying, I'm not there yet with that idea. Can you explain it further with me? And my own personal experience is that if you ask a question, Probably asking on behalf of at least one other person. Right. Uh, in the test, yes. you said that uh, too much communication would be bad. Would you put that in line? Where, good question, where the terms are slightly complicated like that, yeah. I would be inclined to, not for communication purposes, but really because otherwise I might confuse myself. Um, typically, someone might write, for example, 2x to the power of 6 to get to square the 2. So I think it's probably a safety mechanism more than a communication. Issue, you know what I mean. Anything else? Really briefly, why does it work? I'm going to zoom up here so you can see it. You do not have to write these notes down. But really quickly, you don't need to know this in order to use the rule, you just need to be able to use it. But effectively, if I use a plus b squared, that's basically a plus b multiplied by itself. So we've got a plus b times a plus b. So if I have a rectangle like so, and sort of divide it into lengths like this, and let's just say this long length is A, um, and the short length is B, I would have an A there, this is very bad to draw actually, sorry, and a B there, and I would have an A there, and a B there. I don't even know why I had a rectangle, it should have been a square. Okay, so if I then look at all the separate parts, I'll have an A squared there, and I'll have a B squared there, oops, It's just really badly done. That's right, that's good. Um, and then here I'll have an AB, and here I'll have BA just multiplied together. But AB is the same as BA. You know, three fours are the same as four threes. Six times seven is the same as seven times six. 1.2 times four is the same as four times 1.2. So the order of the um, of a product doesn't matter. Which means that these two diagonals here are simply two AB, putting it into alphabetical order. So we've got, a squared plus b squared, and we've got plus 2ab, but we typically put a 2ab in the middle. So that's why that works. And similarly for subtraction, in that we've got, I can't really show this very well with um, uh, an actual drawing, but I will just go like this, just use the standard box method. You can do it using the forms and shapes and stuff, but I just don't want to. So there's a minus b, there's a minus b here. That gives me a squared here. Negative b times negative b, two negatives multiplied together, it make it make it positive. So it's positive b squared. And then I've got a times b, negative a, sorry, a times negative b is negative a b. And we've got um, negative b times a is negative b a. Same idea, it's a negative with the same product. And so that middle step gives us our minus 2ab here. But a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. I just like to put that little bit of connection through because it is useful for some people to understand why it works and why, for example, we do need that middle term. We can't just say a squared plus b squared. So if you did say, say a squared plus b squared, it would be sort of like you were doing this part and this part and missing out those other two parts of the, of the area. 
That's why it doesn't work. Okay, back to it. Any questions? Give it some two squares then. Um, quite commonly um, described with the acronym DOCS, difference of two squares. This is what you can write your um, theory book, summary book. It's up to you whether you need to write the rule down, but at least write the example down. Now, unlike perfect square, DOCS has exactly one form, and it is that we have a big subtraction. There's no subtraction, you can't do anything much unless you can manipulate it. And then I have a, oops, I'm going to do it the wrong way around. I have a minus b, sorry, I was going to do it the wrong way, a plus b. So what this means is that the two binomials have the same terms except one of them, in one of the binomials, it's a subtraction of those two terms, and in the other binomial, it's the addition of those two terms. And if we have that exact, exact possibility there, then it turns out that the expansion is always, always, always the square of the first take away the square of the second. Now, take away is simply the operation of subtraction, and the result of a subtraction is called a difference, which is why it's called a difference of two squares. So the result of an expansion is a difference of two squares. Okay, so again, I'm going to go through a complicated example. Um, the only reason why I'm doing a complicated one is because you should have gone through this already in core maths. If you didn't get it the first time in core maths, I appreciate that my examples are probably uh, once more a step too far. If that's the case, I can do some one on one with you to make sure that you're okay with it. So I'm going to use um, 3 minus 4x, 3 plus 4x. Oh, let's make it 3 minus 2x squared. Just make it 3 minus 2x squared, 3 plus 2x squared. Okay, so first of all, does it fit the pattern of dots? Of course it does, otherwise it would be a bad example. So just to explain what I mean, I've got A as being 3 and B as being 2x squared. And not just 2x, but 2x squared. Do I have A and B in my other binomial? Yeah, I've got A there, 3, and I've got 2x squared there. Yeah. So it almost fits the pattern. The next thing I need to check is, am I subtracting them in one of the binomials and adding them in the other? Yes, I am. And please remember, it doesn't matter the order of the multiplication. So I could have, if it was 3 plus 2x squared times 3 minus 2x squared, that would also fit the pattern. It doesn't matter which order they are. As long as you've got a minus b times a plus b, or if you've got a plus b times a minus b, it fits the pattern. Is that okay? Alright, so now we can, I'll just follow through. So that equals 3 squared minus 2x squared squared. Can you just write it straight up as the answer? Or do you can, can I skip this step here? Yeah. Um, again, it kind of did that green's not that great, is it? Again, you can, um, but I'm just going to go for straight up because otherwise it doesn't work out. It's just not working with those colors, sorry. Um, if, if you don't use this middle step, Sorry, this is just dodgy. I'm sorry. I was trying to be clever with the cutters, and I just made it end up making life worse for us. Uh, if you don't uh, use that middle step, all it means is that you might make uh, some errors, that's all. Communication wise, if you know that consistently, 99% of the time, you can go straight from this, uh, the, the question to the answer just by applying dots, then you can do that. Okay? Um, so that's 9 minus 4x squared, uh, just to finish off there. I'm sorry about my ground colours there. Ah, good question. Um, right, I'll take a question in a second. Thank you for raising your hand. Jamie did ask the question spontaneously, but I would like to answer since it's relevant right now. He said, 
Should we write it as minus 4x squared plus 9, so they're in ascending, descending powers of x? No. When it's a trinomial or bigger, whatever you do, leave it in those descending powers. But when you're just left with two terms, it's actually often nicer to leave it with starting with a positive term. So, uh, long story short, leave it as it is. Right. I should have four x to the power of four. Yes, thank you. That wasn't me mucking about too much. That's right. How is it? Um, okay. Bit of muttering going on. I just want to check there if there are any questions before I give you one to try yourself. Okay, try this one. It is a bit tricksy. See how you go. Your choice. You don't do it this time, I suggest two minutes. Two. Miranda, I didn't trust myself to borrow yours. Gotta get myself first. Thank you. 
Okay. So let's get back to standard classroom norms, and that is when I'm in instruction mode, students need to be learning by listening, by doing, and by asking questions. We ask questions by raising our hand and waiting to be acknowledged, but that way only one person is talking at once. So let's make that the norm for instruction phases, please. Okay, so XQ, 2XQ is like A and 1 is like B. So in this case I've got A plus B times A minus B, but it still is the pattern of dots, it's just that these two have been swapped over positions, but it doesn't matter. So it's the same thing, so it's A squared minus B squared. So 2x cubed being like a, I've got 2x cubed in my brackets here and squared it, and 1 being like b, I've gone minus b squared, minus 1 squared like so. Okay, then the rest is just tricky um, index law stuff. So I've got 2 squared is 4. x cubed squared, we multiply those um, powers together, so we've got x to the power of 6. 3 times 2 is 6, like so. 2 squared is 4. Minus... And then 1 squared is just 1. So it's 4x to the power of 6 minus 1. Before I do a brief explanation as to why it works, I'd like to ask if there are any questions about anything specific on that slide. Yeah. Oh, I could have. Yeah, I could have. <coughs> I'm, I'm sort of, my problem is, Zoe, is that I'm kind of, um, I'm, I'm sort of battling two different ways of people um, accessing it. Some people find all the brackets confusing, so I'm not putting brackets in, and then some people are going, but why did you do brackets, which is a fair question, which is like, well, maybe you I put it. So I'm sorry, I'm sort of, I feel like I'm seesawing between two ways of communicating, yes, and I know that's confusing. What's, what's the point that's of putting one in its own bracket and two x cubed in its own bracket? You can't do that. You can't do that because that does not equal the square of that minus the square of that. Okay, you can't do that. That's a that's a perfect square. It's different. So that's impossible. That's not right at all. If you're not too sure, well, I'll explain it to you. But um, you can't do that. All you can do is square the first term and square the second one. Now, if I went, if I went, oh, sorry. 2x cubed and you went square like that. That is really unclear what that means. Am I squaring x cubed? Am I squaring the 3? Or am I squaring all of 2x cubed? So the brackets allow us to communicate that what we're doing is we're squaring the entire term. Now there are no pluses or minuses in there, which effectively means I'm just squaring the individual bits there. If there was a plus there, then that would make it Okay, so that's why the brackets are necessary for the first one, but not necessary for just square one, because one square is just one, you don't need the brackets. Okay, really quickly talking about why it works. Again, you don't need to know why it works, but for some people it really makes it solid for them. A plus B times A minus B, I'll just use the box method, but chicken breaking also works. Um, a plus B here, A minus B here. A times A is A squared, and up down here, B times minus B is negative B squared. So the B times B is B squared, and a positive times a negative is negative. So there's my negative B squared. And have a look at what happens to these terms. A times positive B is positive AB. And then A times negative B is negative AB. And so the middle terms here just basically equal zero, they cancel each other out. So when the middle term disappears and we are simply left with um, the a squared bit and the b squared bit like so. So that's why, why it works, why it's just a squared minus b squared. Again, you don't have to know why it works, but that's why it works. See how you went? It was A plus B and then A take B, and then you went down the box and then the box. Does that work for the one? Yep. So just to make it really clear, the reason why we use these these patterns, these perfect squares and difference of two squares, are really common. They occur in algebra, um, algebraic simplification all the time. 
Um, so because they fit a particular pattern, it's worth learning and using the pattern to make your calculations a lot faster, okay? So by being able to recognise a perfect square like I've got at the top right-hand corner there, you are able to um, take a lot of your processing off by doing a, the expansion the long way, and instead you can go straight to effectively the answer for an expansion. Okay, so, um, but everything I've done is completely consistent with expanding brackets. So here, where um, you can see that if I do go for an expansion, a plus b all squared, and just treat it like a plus b times a plus b, then you can see that it does give me that a squared plus a 2ab plus b squared. It does give us that. So technically, you could go through the rest of your um, mathematical um, life just using binomial expansion and never knowing what a perfect square is and never knowing what a difference of two squares is. But the point is, is that by devoting time and energy to understanding, recognising and using these two common techniques, your toolkit is bigger and therefore your ability to solve even more complicated problems is, um, is, has increased. Okay, I'm not saying that you're there yet, but I'm saying you can get there with practice and it's worth doing. And right now, you might be in this classroom thinking, but it's easier for me just to expand it, Richard. I don't want to try and recognise it. I want to simply um, just do a chicken beak method or box method and expand it without having to think about it. Well, okay, I get that. And that's okay for you to be there now, but it's not okay for you to be there in three or four weeks' time, let alone um, next semester, let alone next year and so on. Not, not if you want to take your mathematical studies further. Okay, because you need to increase your toolkit and when you are practised with it, you will know that it is easier than expanding it long form. Not that it doesn't work. It's like, for example, never knowing your five times table and saying, well, if I come across ten times five, I'll just go five plus 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 five. By the time I've added them all up, I'll get to the right answer, 50. Yeah, but it takes a lot longer. And you might make a mistake because you might only add up nine fives by mistake. So knowing your times table is good. This is kind of the equivalent. Knowing these patterns are good because it allows you to um, solve more difficult problems more easily with practice. I'm going to write, well, I have already written two problems up on the board which are quite tricky and I would suggest that maybe they might be a little bit um, beyond where we're at. So... They are challenge questions, and I would like to see, if you are following things pretty well by, right by now, I'd like you to try these two problems in your exercise book and see if you can work it. I've got a small kit to help you, and I'm more than happy to give more hints as you go along. However, if, if the last few slides have really been quite what the to you, maybe it might be better if you go to exercise 8B, and even go before question 14 to some of the more straightforward ones, just to get your confidence up in using perfect square and dots. Okay, you be in charge of your learning. Don't say, I'll never get there, just say I'm not there yet, so I need to go back and try some easier ones or some simpler ones to get my understanding up. That's absolutely fine, take charge of your learning. But ultimately, I would like to see every student, maths extended student, being able to tackle something like question 14 without too much difficulty. That's where Can you I need to get, get to. My text on. Yeah. Uh, 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 Right, so something like it's kind of like saying with It works, it doesn't work in numbers, it doesn't work in numbers, without you, it's just numbers. So you're kind of like saying two cubes plus two square is the same as two to the power of five. That's what you're doing. You're saying that 8 plus 4 is equal to 2 I don't know why it's 2x. I don't know why it's 2x. Where's the 2x? So, all I've done 
is I've gone x u plus x squared equals x to the power of i. As you can see, it doesn't work in our number. So it doesn't work in our number. So, yeah. Because that's the case. Because you've got a plus b times a minus b. And this one doesn't have a minus. No, and it's called a minus. So, the times. I was, I was ex no, I was explaining. That doesn't work, nor does that. That's what it means. I guess the that one the 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 perfect the difference of the I'll do that one. So, I I suggest that Oh, sorry, I'll just stop the recording.